What happens after you leave the closing table on this episode of Title Tuesdays? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. I have a file sitting on my desk because I wanted to talk today about post-closing. What happens when you as a buyer or you as a seller leave the closing table? So first I'm gonna talk about the seller because it's pretty easy. The seller is getting rid of the property, they're selling the property. Typically, you're gonna to come to a closing table, and if you would like to leave with a check, you will usually leave the closing table with a check, and you are done. There is one thing you need to do, and that is to close out your utility bills. We usually hold back at closing, uh, usually two or three times the average monthly bill for your water to make sure you close your utility bill. So it's very important if you're a seller of a property and the title company is holding back money for your final utility bill, you get that bill closed, you get the final read, and you either send it to them to pay or you send them a paid bill and they will refund you your money. It's not my money, it's your money. And if you're the seller and you choose to get a secured wire transfer, you could potentially uh, leave the closing table without your money. We would then initiate a wire transfer and send it over to your bank account. And that's about all you need as a seller. Now let's move on to that buyer. What happens as, as a buyer when you leave the closing table? Whether you're getting a loan or whether you are buying cash, we have to then post-close that file. It means we have to make all the photocopies, we have to mail out all of the invoices to all of the vendors that are getting paid, but most importantly, we need to make sure we get you of public record. What does that mean? We use an e-recording program called Simplifile. We upload your deed and or mortgage in public record and we electronically send that over to the county in order to be recorded. It's very, very important. If you're using a title company that does not do e-recording, you need to find a new title company because what happens is there are documents that could get recorded within that gap in coverage. How would you feel if the seller left the closing table and went to another title company and sold that same house they sold to you? To somebody else so we need to make sure we close today we record today and we get you a public record today so this way there's no gap in time who else does this benefit if you're an investor and you're buying a property and you know you have those deed restriction properties the banks cannot comprehend that the closing date is the date the closing took place not the date of the recording of the deed but you know it's like talking to a wall you need to try and convince them otherwise, which won't work. So they go off of the date the deed was recorded in public records. So if you're using a title company that mails the documents to the county to be recorded, or they wait and they send them in batches, maybe wait a week to send them down, you need to be very careful because that is cutting in to your 90-day window. So you want to make sure they're using e-recording. We at Independence Title will close today and Usually, I would say 95% of the time, unless there's a reason we're holding off, would record your deed in public records and record your mortgage in public records. That's why the lenders love using us. Now, sometimes like in Broward County, your deed can come back within uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Some of the longer counties like Miami is five to seven day turnaround time to get your deed recorded. But once your deed comes back, what happens? Well, then we issue your final title policy. You know, on previous videos, we talked about leaving the closing with what? That's right, that marked up title commitment. That is your temporary insurance binder. When the title company marks up, all of the requirements have been satisfied and all of your exceptions that would appear on your final title policy. So then we issue our final title policy. The average is two to six months for title companies to do these policies. I speak to some of the, the title underwriters all around uh, the state of Florida and they tell us they're always tracking title companies down because they've collected that money and they'll get to the policy when they get to the policy. We issue it the day the deed is recorded. So if your deed gets recorded today, we will issue your policy today and mail it out. So you could potentially close today, record today, get your policy today. Now, after that title insurance policy is issued, what do we do as a title company? Well, one of the services that we offer is we scan your entire file to make it uh, a PDF and we will have it on our, our server. 
and we back it up three or four times to make sure that if you were to ever call our office, I get calls all of the time from closings from, from 15 years ago, 10 years ago saying, hey, you know, I needed a copy of this. I needed a copy of my survey. I needed a copy of, of a document that I signed. Do you happen to have it? And we are able to get those documents off of our server very, very fast. We love doing it. So after that final policy is issued, we then do a final audit of that file. We get it indexed and ready to be scanned. And then final, we take those documents and we put them through the shredder. All of our documents are secured and we, we put them through a shredder bin that gets, uh, we have a certificate of shredding for all of our documents that are uh, finalized here at the title company. And then we take this fantastic folder and we start a new file to help someone else close on their next home. So if you have any questions, as always, leave me a comment below. I wanted to kind of give you just a little update today uh, of, of what happens when you leave the closing table. So you understand a lot of times you know what happens before because you're searching for a house and you go through that whole process because you are part of that process. The post-closing process you're typically not part of. So I wanted to make sure if you're a uh, realtor or an investor, you understand what we do after you leave the closing table. If you're a buyer or a seller as well, I wanted you to understand what happens after you leave the closing table. So I hope you learned something new. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment below. Maybe a share on social media. We love to see our videos shared uh, on social media because we get more views, which means we're helping more people. So thanks for watching this episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher signing off and I look forward to seeing you at the closing table.